Manufacturing Lesson 2. Last lesson, you should have tried to produce as many items of your product as possible within the hour that you were given. At the same time, you should have tracked your costs. This should have been recorded in the boxes at the activity. Let's have a look at how this would have taken place. As you received your products, you would have needed to record them as part of your direct material costs. In here, you would enter the cost price of each item for product 1, product 2 and product 3. At the end of the lesson, you need to have a look and see how much you have left over. In other words, how many of those kits or raw materials remained unopened. These need to be transferred to raw materials stock. In other words, it's all that is left over that you would need to put into an asset account to show that you still have it. The balance can then be taken to work in progress. In other words, your factory. That's the box that's got the picture of a factory in it. You can transfer the cost of each kit into the cost for each product. These are the costs of all the kits that you bought and that were opened and you started making. It doesn't matter if they were finished or not. As long as you started using them, they will also be considered part of work in progress. You then need to consider your direct labor cost. All the items that are completed need to have 10 Rand per item factored in. You would need to add this to each product. If you have a situation where some products had some labor allocated but not all and so they were only half made, what you could do is allocate half the labor cost as you would still need to pay these workers most probably. So you could then charge 5 Rand for a half made item instead of 10 Rand per item. The last thing you need to consider are your factory overheads. This is your 10 Rand equipment rental and 10 Rand factory rental per hour. In other words, your total factory overheads would be 20 Rand per hour. Notice that you can't really allocate these for each product as you were able to your direct material costs and direct labor cost. Simply pop it in at the bottom, maybe next to the factory, but you do need to include it in your work in progress. Now you need to have a look and see how many goods did you actually finish? In other words, how many of your items would you be able to put into your shop if you had one? It's quite easy to see if you've got just a couple of items what your finished goods would be if you've got no work in progress. However, if some of your items are finished and some are not finished, you are now faced with a dilemma. Although you can show your direct costs for each item, how will you allocate your overheads? In reality, it depends on the business, what they think is the most realistic indication, as well as possibly how much time they have available to allocate costs. If it is going to be far too time consuming, they might work on an abbreviated amount, in other words, an estimate of how much they need to allocate for those items. Generally, businesses would work out a standard cost for a unit by tracking it very, very carefully over time. And from experience, they know this is what the, the item actually costs. For our purposes, we are not going to do this. We are simply going to take all the costs as shown here, put it into work in progress, and then work out what the cost per item is at the end of the period. I leave it up to you to work out how much of your overheads you want to leave in the work in progress and how much you think makes up part of your finished goods stock cost. Now that you've worked out your finished goods stock value, you can calculate a cost per unit by simply dividing the value of your stock by the number of items that you made. You are now able to go on and work through lesson two, where you need to discuss your management accounting concepts. What price would you sell it at? How do you think you might work out the break even point? Consider your production process in order to determine how you could improve your productivity. 
Then consider your financial accounting. You need to draw up rough T accounts, which you can work out from looking at your diagram that you previously did. In other words, the costs that you put in boxes. Simply represent them now as ledger accounts. You can then work out your income statement in order to determine whether you actually made a profit or a loss. Remember to factor in your other costs that are given, such as the accountant's salary, etc. Also keep in mind that you are looking at a month. In other words, work out how many hours there are in that month.